If you're ready for a story, gather round. If you're ready for a story, gather round. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, gather around. Rainbow, are you ready for a story? Are you ready to sing? Okay, are you guys ready to sing? Uh, let me hear you. If you sing really loud, maybe Miss Kim can hear you, okay? If you're ready for a story, please sit down. If you're ready for a story, please sit down. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, please sit down. Rainbow. That was very long. Are you proud of yourself? <laughs> well, you should be. That was excellent. Isn't he just the best dragon, boys and girls? <laughs> so are you ready for a story? Okay. Can you go over and sit on the chair? Oh, that's a good dragon. <laughs> Bye. Oh, good morning. It is getting cold out there, isn't it? We're in the month of November now. Next week is Thanksgiving. And depending on where you were at, you might have had a little bit of snow the other day, did you? I did. I was kind of excited to wake up to that. I like snow. Well, today we are doing the letter G. We had A, B, C, D, E, and F. The next letter is G. And we have some G books and some G words. I wore my giraffe shirt. Giraffe begins with G. We're going to read some giraffe books and some books about, or we're going to read a giraffe book and a book about goats. But I also have some extra books here that we're not going to read that you might want to check out from the library or from the library system. There's this one called Bunny Days, which of course does not sound like it is about giraffes or goats, but it's about bunnies and goats. And it's very cute. It's a series of three little short stories together. Uh, I thought you might like that. This one, we're reading another book by this author about goats. This lady that wrote it and illustrated it owns goats. So she knows all about this. Them. This is called G is for Goat. And it's an alphabet book, which we have this at our library. And The short giraffe. And the giraffes are tall, aren't they? Well, this little guy is short. And this is a fun book, and we have this at our library. The first one, the bunny book, you have to borrow from one of the others, but we can all you have to do is request them and bring them up. But today we're going to read Oh Look, which is about goats. And one of my favorites, the first year that I was doing story time, I did Giraffes Can't Dance. We did it a couple of years ago when we had our whole year on music. So those are our books. Now let's get to thinking about the letter G. The letter G. G, giraffe, G, goat. So many of our letters can be a little confusing, can't they? <laughs> G has two sounds, J and G. <laughs> Just to keep it interesting. All right. Let's think of some names. Some G names. Maybe one of you has a G name. Do we have any Galens? That's an old name. You don't hear it too often. I had an Uncle Galen. George. Lots of Georges out there. George is a very popular G name. G George G Galen. How about Greg? That sounds a little bit different completely. That's because it's gone walking with the letter R. So you get grrr. <laughs> and we go grrr. When rainbow goes, does rainbow go grrr? <laughs> I don't know. Do dragons go grrr? Do they rainbow? <laughs> Greg. How about girl names? Gail. G Gail. Here's a GR. Lots of R's go walking with G's. <laughs> Grace. Grace. And how about Gwen? Gwen. That's short for the name Gwendolyn. Both of those are pretty names. Another letter that, that um, 
goes walking a lot of times with Archie is an L. You get the glass. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about foods? Grapes, green beans. There's two GRs. How about this garlic? Do you like garlic? I probably didn't either like it when I was little or know what it was when I was little. You can be a little spicy. And this one is just so much fun to say. Some people call them chickpeas, but they're called, they're named garbanzo beans. Can you say that? Garbanzo. That's just fun to say. <laughs> and there's the g g garbanzo. How about things that are starting with the letter G? The color green. Our game is going to be about the color green. There's the GR. Girl. Girl starts with G. <laughs> and ghost. Ghost. There's a GH. Ghost. Ghost. How about the animals? Well, giraffe <laughs> and goat. And I thought, what's a third one? Goldfish. Two colors that start with G. Green and gold. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, are we ready to get going? Sing a song? Are you ready to shake your sillies out? Maybe we should shake our, what can we shake? Let's shake our giggles out. There's a G. This is fun trying to think of words that we can shake out instead of our sillies that go with our letter. So let's shake our giggles out. We can go shake, 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 shake your giggles out. <laughs> like we're laughing, okay? We're gonna, you ready? You gotta sing loud. I can't hear you if you don't sing loud. We're going to shake, shake, shake our giggles out. Shake, shake, shake our giggles out. Shake, shake, shake our giggles out. And wiggle our waggles on the way. Wiggle and giggle, they rhyme. <laughs> Let's sing it one more time. We're going to shake, shake, shake our giggles out. Shake, shake, shake our giggles out. Shake, shake, shake our giggles out. And wiggle our waggles away. Yay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see. Ready for our first book? Our book about goats. These are really wonderful illustrations. Let me tip our camera just a little. Take a step. <laughs> All right. Oh, look. And this is kind of, if you've ever read or sung Going on a Bear Hunt, this book follows that sort of pattern. Oh, look, she's got all her goats, whoops, all her goats here, and she's leaving for the day. But the goats say, oh, look, we see a fence. It's always there, keeping us in, safe and sound, can't go over it, can't go under it, can't go around it. But there's the gate, and it's unlocked. Let's go through it. Squeak, squeak, squeak. It goes as we go through it. Oh, look, we see a bridge, a nice wide bridge. Can't jump over it, can't go under it, can't go around it. Let's go across it. Click, click, click. Our little hooves go as we go across it. I think I just need to tilt it. <laughs> oh, look, we see a hill high and green. Can't go over it, can't go under it, can't go around it. Let's climb up it. Puff, puff, puff as we climb up it. Oh, look, we see water. A deep blue pool. Can't go over it. Can't go under it. Can't go around it. Let's swim in it. Swish, swish, swish. We go as we swim in it. Oh, look, we see some mud. Soft and gooey, slippery and slick. Can't 
go over it. Can't go under it. Can't go around it. <laughs> Let's play in it. Squish, squish, squish. It goes as we play with it. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh, my. <laughs> He's really enjoying it. Look at the goat herd lady. Mm, she does not look so happy. Oh, look, we see a fair with big striped tents and flags all aflutter. Can't go over them. Can't go under them. Can't go around them. <laughs> Let's run between them. <laughs> flap, flap, flap. Go the flags as we run between them. Oh all their little muddy bodies. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, look, we see a, a carousel with merry, mu merry, merry music going round and round. Can't go over it, can't go under it, can't go around it. Let's get on it. <laughs> oompa, 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 pa, oompa, 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 pa. It goes as we climb on. And a carousel is another name for a merry-go-round. Goats on a merry-go-round. <laughs> oh, look, we see a mirror. It wiggles and wobbles. Ooh, can't go over it, can't go under it, can't go around it. How does it do that? Let's look behind it. Uh-oh, I have to show you, look at this big monstery guy. Oh, look, we see something with great big eyes and sharp green claws. It's an ogre and he looks mean. Now we're scared, let's run home as fast as we can. Past the mirror that wiggles and Pass the mirror that wiggles and wobbles on the carousel that mm, pa paws. Between the tents that flap, flap, flap. Into the water with a swish, swish, swish. In the gooey mud with a squish, squish, squish. the hill with a puff, 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 across the bridge with a click, click, click. Through the gate with a long, loud squeak. Hear that onomatopoeia word? <laughs> and back home safe and sound. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? I love the illustrations, the drawings in this book. They're so lively and so cool looking. Well, that's one that you can get here at our library. Actually, the only one I borrowed, I think, is... Oh, wait. I'm sorry. This one actually came from one of the other libraries. This came from Muncie Library. But if you like this book, you can request it. And we will bring it here for you to read. All right. Let's see. What are we up to? Oh. It's time for a song. This kid is going to get a little water. <laughs> Before we sing. Okay. I had a hard time finding it. something to do with G or goats or giraffes. I really wanted a giraffe song, but none of them were fun. But I found this. Now, this is a song that you may know, um, but with different words. But we usually sing the ants go marching but somebody was smart and they changed it to the goats go marching. So I'm going to read it one verse through so that you hear how it sounds so that you can follow along to sing. The goats came marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The goats came marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. The goats came marching one by one. The little one stopped, it's always the little one who stopped, to bask in the sun and one in sun rhyme mostly. <laughs> then they all came marching over the rickety bridge. <laughs> okay, 
The second one is second line is two by two, and the little one stopped to look at the view. Two and view stop rhyme, and remember they go over the rickety bridge. And if you're wondering about the rickety bridge, if you know the story about the three billy goats, there's our bridge. <laughs> but I didn't want to just read the billy goat story today. I wanted to read something different about goats. And then three by three, the little one stopped to sit by a tree. Tree, three rhyme. And they all came marching over the rickety bridge. Rickety bridge. Okay, you guys ready to sing? And you guys, you must know this. <laughs> okay. Ready? The goats came marching one by one. Hurrah. Hurrah. This is a good one for keeping time, too. The goats came marching one by one. Hurrah. Hurrah. The goats came marching one by one. The little one stopped to sit in the sun. And they all came marching over the rickety bridge. <laughs> the goats came marching two by two. Hurrah. Hurrah. The goats came marching two by two. Hurrah. Hurrah, the goats came marching two by two. The little ones stopped to look at the view and they all came marching over the rickety bridge. The goats came marching three by three. Hurrah, hurrah. The goats came marching three by three. The little ones stopped to sit a, sit by a tree. They all came marching over the rickety bridge. <laughs> that one will get stuck in your head and you can sing it all day long. <laughs> All right, let's see. We are ready for our second book. Giraffes Can't Dance. I'd like you to think, if you haven't read this book before, about a giraffe dancing. They have very long necks and they have very long legs. And sometimes they might feel a little awkward. And sometimes we feel a little awkward. Our bodies look a little different. Maybe like our legs grew really fast or our arms grew really fast. Sometimes it takes a while for us to all catch up and we might feel a little bit like a giraffe. Imagine dancing with all those really long legs and that really long neck. And this is a story that makes you feel good about who you are and just enjoying being you. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin, you know, like giraffes are. <laughs> okay. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots of trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Here he is eating. And here he is trying to run. Mm, he's having some problems. Now, every year in Africa, they held the jungle dance, where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year, when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad, because when it came to dancing, he was really rather bad. This is jungle dance. Ooh, interesting. Look how we've written all our words all over the place. The warthog started waltzing and the rhinos rock and roll. The lions danced a tango that was elegant to behold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel. And eight baboons then teamed up to do a splendid Scottish reel. Here is a perfect example of how not to talk to your friends just because they're different. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked towards the floor. But the lions saw him coming, and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. That was not nice at all.
Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought, I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and started walking home. He never felt so sad before, so sad and all alone. It is definitely not what you want to do to your friends. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket, who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Listen to the swaying grass, listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. Gerald looks very happy right there, doesn't he? And with that, the cricket smiled and he picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making little circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. He threw his legs out sideways, and then he swung them everywhere. Then he did a backward somersault and leapt up into the air. Wow. These animals do not know what they are missing, huh? That's some dance. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I'm dancing, yes, I'm dancing, I am dancing, Gerald cried. <laughs> then, one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we have ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and he looked up at the moon and the stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. that a nice book? I love the illustrations in this book too. They're really lively. <laughs> but a good thing to remember, we don't have to be the same as everybody else. We have to listen to our head and our heart mm -hmm. and dance to the music that we love. And this book is ours at the library and you can borrow it from us. All right. Put that down there. Okay. Well, it's time for our game. I had a little hard time finding a G game, too. My goodness, G was just a challenge that I wasn't expecting. But we have the green game. There's a couple ways you can play this. In a room, pick any room in your house. Don't try to think about it too much. Just go, okay, we're going to go to the... Um, our bedroom, or we're going to go to the bathroom, or the kitchen, or the basement, and without thinking about what's there, take your little timer, and how many green things can you find in one minute? Who can find the most? Who can find the fastest? All sorts of things you can do. Who can, who can find the most in the whole house? 
who can find the oddest green thing. And if you get bored with just looking for green things, you could really use your brain and look for things that start with the j, g, 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 the g sound. Can you find G things, glasses and grandma and girl and garter snake? <laughs> Think of all the G words you can and see how many G things you can find just by looking around. And whoever finds the most or finds, finds the most in a minute, whoever finds the most at just, you know, you could set it for an hour and you can look all over the house. How many green things? You could use your cell phone to take a picture. You could have somebody write them down for you. You could draw little pictures of them. If you have good memory, you can just remember them. You could bring them together if there's something that you could pick up. I found a green piece of paper. I found a can of green beans. You can do it like a scavenger hunt. So you have fun with that, okay? All right, so it is time to do our craft. And we have some green paper. What are we going to put on our green paper? Well, we're going to make a giraffe. We're going to change him a little bit from this because Miss Kim just thinks he looks a little creepy. <laughs> but if you like him facing this way, you can do that. But we're going to we're going to make him look in sideways. <laughs> I think he'll look a little less odd. <laughs> but it's okay to be odd. So if you like this guy this way, that's fine. All right, so we need, obviously we need background paper. And I, I chose green because giraffes live in out in the grasslands, although the grasslands of Africa are not too terribly green, but are pretty yellow that we use for our giraffe because the giraffes are pretty much a, a sort of a yellowy tan color. So we often color, make them uh, green. We need our scissors. And the other thing that you need are at least one color brown. If you have two, that works. You can um, <laughs> you can get the different colored spots going on uh, just to give it a little bit more detail. Okay. Let's, let's put you here. Um, and I brought googly eyes for our draft that we're making today. I started with the crayon eyes and I didn't care for them on mine, but you can do crayon eyes or you could cut out your white and your black for your eyes. So most you need a background color, you need some color for your giraffe, and then you need some lighter color or some colors to put on your giraffe for his spots. You can make your giraffe whatever color you want to. You can make a purple giraffe or a pink giraffe. <laughs> Please also think about sending us pictures of your craft projects when you make them with Kim. You can attach them to our um, Facebook post. All right, so how do we get from this big piece of paper to a letter G? Well, I want you to take your big piece of paper and fold it in half. Try to get it as close to in half. Try not to squish that too much because we're going to open it right back up and have a crease in the middle of your draft. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. I get my desk up here. <laughs> All right. So we don't want it to fill up the whole page. Top to bottom, side to side, we need to have a little space around there. So we're not gonna cut like right out of the edge. We're gonna come in a ways and we're going to cut about half a circle, maybe more like an oval. Get it done, just kind of be like in a little bit of egg shape. Not totally happy with that. I'm going to and then just a little bit more, curve it off more. There we go. Opens up. We've got something that looks like that. And you probably don't need the pieces that you cut off that. 
for our rest of our thing. We just need to have the center of this, which is what we used for his face. So we're going to fold it back up. And something else to think about it. <laughs> You're not holding it back up. Because we're going to go in like this. See about here's the fold. Come up here about like this. And come in. Okay, about that far. Oops. Let me show you. There we go. Now it's going to be your actual letter G. And then we're going to follow our curve that we made the first time around and try to keep the body of our letter the same thickness. That looks like a letter C, doesn't it? And we're going to make that first. Okay, so you have this. And you should have some sort of wonky looking thing like this. Okay, we're going to take that sort of piece that sticks down there and cut a rectangle from it. And the rectangle is going to be the hook on our G. So let's get that glue stick. Let's do those too many things. <laughs> All right, I'm going to lay my scrap paper over here. Also, on for that browns, you can use your scrap paper because we're just cutting out all sorts of random little shapes for that, okay? You don't need a big piece. I had to have a big piece because I didn't have any scrap brown yet. Okay. And we're going to... Wow, I used that purple glue and it already disappeared. <laughs> Didn't see where I glued it. I'm going to glue it all down. So get your glue stick and put glue, 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 all over the back of your G. Try not to get it on your work surface. This kid is trying very hard not to do that. Okay. Now, you remember, G has the open facing that way. So. Okay. There's our C that will soon be a G. Now we're going to take that little piece that you cut off and we're going to put it right there. And now we've turned our C into a G. Look at that. The letter G. <laughs> okay. Now, our most tricky, tricky part. <laughs> is our head and I when I made our first my first one I did a fold in half and cut it around to make the shape and I think I'm going to do that again I'm going to use half of our extra piece there and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna fold it this way so we're very much going to do the same shape we're just going to change the way he's looking. And this is sort of an oval. And if you open it up, then you go, if you like it, you can use it. If you don't like it, trim it a little bit more. So, let's see. I think I like that. Maybe we can make it just a tad bit smaller. Oops, I don't like that. I tell already I didn't like it. Okay. Like that. And I'm going to tip. I made one end just a little bit narrower. You can make it not like a complete circle. And I'm going to tip that up because I'm going to make this his mouth. So let's glue him the face on, or head on. <laughs> they said, or you can make, you can put his head the way that we had for my first one. Either one are fine. And you want to come up here high on your, on your G. You don't want to be able to see the G. Okay. Now, 
he still needs an ear. Boy, I didn't get much glue on that, did I? No, I turned the glue down. <laughs> It doesn't want to stay down. There we go. <laughs> okay. We need a little ear. And you remember last week when we made our fish? We did that fold over thing and cut an oval. Fold it over just a tiny little piece. And then cut that little humpy piece. Yep. That's all we need for an ear. Cut it in half if you're going to do two ears. I'm going to make him sideways, so really should only be able to see one here. Maybe I'll do them really close together so it looks like when you're looking at something sideways, you can see both of the things. They just look different. There we go. Here's this. Wow, this glue does not want to stick today. <laughs> okay. Now, to get a little creative, giraffes have horns. And I'm just going to draw right over our yellow and I'm going to put one here. And it's just a, a line, a line, and a little dot. And I thought this is too hard to cut out of our. Of paper and glue on because they're too tiny. And then I'm going to give him a smile this way. Okay. And <laughs> I'm going to give him an eye and then we're going to have fun with our brown. That's, that part's really easy. Maybe. This kid seems to be having glue problems today. <laughs> okay. Get a whole bunch of glue. <laughs> now my fingers are going to be all sticky when I go to cut the paper. Where's his eye? Okay. Ah. Brown paper. I had the two different colors. What I did when I made our first guy, I cut put the paper together and cut two strips and then I cut them into little squares. I had a whole bunch of them and I picked up each of the squares and I did, actually I did the squares together so I didn't have to cut so many times. The two together and just do wiggly they're just blobby shapes. They're not no particular shape at all. I'm trying to think where you can, there you can see them. And there's we're not putting them on in any particular pattern. You just grab one and glue it wherever you want to. Okay. Now, obviously, it's probably easier if you make all your little spots, which is what I did yesterday. Remember, make them wiggly woggly. They can be all sorts of funny little shapes. They're just not square. <laughs> so I've made two more. I'm going to make a few more. Cut them all. See how this skin is just, whoop. this is great if you're just learning how to use scissors because there's no lines that have to be perfect. You can just Wiggle around and make funny shapes. Let's see, can you see it over my? Hard to see. There we go. That one kind of looks like toast. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. I keep creating the holes up here so you guys can see. All my crazy cutting. There we go. Okay, and they pretty much just need a dot of glue. Put in, try to keep it on your draft. <laughs> they can overlap each other. 
they're usually not on their face. Their face is a solid color, but you can go right up close to there. Don't forget some for here. And you can put a lot, a lot of them, or a few of them, as many as you like. I think that I, I felt like I put too many on my first one. So I'm not going to put as many on this, this one. I'm going to leave them just like that. The other thing that we can do for our giraffe is they have a mane. You could make some out of brown, just some little brown here. Or you can take your brown crayon and make like a, see how I'm just making little squiggly marks. They have a mane. You do that? I think that helps them look really snazzy. And they also have a tail. You can give them a tail if you want. Their tails are very, very thin. They have a little tiny tail here. There you go. <laughs> Our little giraffe and give him you can put some highlights in his ears. There's our happy giraffe. <laughs> All right. Well, next week is Thanksgiving on Thursday. So we're going to do <laughs> there goes my crayon. We're going to do story time on Wednesday. Miss Kim is going to be here all day Wednesday. So she's going to do a story time at 11 o'clock on Wednesday morning. Um, if you're not free, you know you can find it on our Facebook. Um, well, you can find it on our page, um, and it'll take you to the YouTube channel to watch. Uh, we're going to do all about Thanksgiving, read some Thanksgiving stories, have a little Thanksgiving craft that maybe you can use for a decoration for your Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so that'll be, but you can always watch it later. If you're used to watching it live, you can watch it later on Thanksgiving Day, giving you something to do. All right, are you guys ready to say goodbye? I'm not sure that I'm ready to say goodbye to all of you, but it's time. So, see you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile, you be a sweet parakeet. Give a hug, ladybug. See you soon, raccoon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear, and blow a kiss. Goldfish. Time for our song. It's inevitable. See you next week. Okay? So long, farewell. I'd be to sing goodbye. We'd like to stay, but we must say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. See you next week.